it's Pastor Katie here for a wonderful episode of Children's Chapel. I'm back home in my office and I'm so glad to be home. Sometimes there's just nothing better than sleeping in your own bed, right? I pray that you all have had a great few weeks of school, whether it's happening at home around the kitchen table or you're in the classroom at your elementary or middle or high school. I hope you know that we have been praying for you. Are you ready to begin Children's Chapel? Let's go ahead and light our candle and I bet you can remember what song we're about to sing. Did you guess this little light of mine? Well, you're right. Are you ready to sing? Let's go. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Amen, everybody. Let your light shine. I put my candle down and it's time for us to do our prayer for illumination. Are you ready? We say, Dear God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to understand your word. Amen. Well, I am so excited to share our story with you today. It's written by Jennifer Grant and it's illustrated by Benjamin Shipper. And it's a great book for us to imagine. Do you know what it is to imagine? I bet you do. Does anyone here watch mm, Paw Patrol? Well, I love Paw Patrol, but do our animals really talk like that? Can our animals drive those things that they drive in the show or fly an airplane? No, but we imagine, we use our brains to imagine the animals doing that, right? And then we get this great little TV show. Recently, I've been in tune with what's cool for all the kids these days, and there's the movie Descendants, which is a Disney movie, and I love it because it imagines a new part of the story for so many beloved Disney movies. It imagines what the children of all the evil queens and Ursula and who else am I saying? Oh, Cruella and Captain Hook. It imagines what their children are like. I think that is so cool. Well, today we're not going to be imagining about animals talking, nor are we going to be imagining about Disney movies, but we're going to be imagining about what God is like. And our book today is called Maybe God is Like That Too. So before we begin, I want us to take, take a second and let's close our eyes, quiet ourselves just a second. And I wonder, how do you imagine God? When you think of God, what do you imagine? Do you have something maybe in mind? Do you want to say it out loud right now? Well, let's see if it's in the story. Maybe God is like that too. Written by Jennifer Grant and illustrated by Benjamin Shipper. I live in the city where the sidewalks and subway cars and buildings and buses are packed with people. But I've never seen God before. Grandma, does God live in the city? I asked one morning at breakfast. Yes, God is here, she says. You just need to know where to look. Wherever you see love, joy, and peace, God is there. 
she says, stirring her tea. Wherever there's patience and kindness and goodness, God is there too. When you see faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, that is God's Spirit at work. Have you ever had breakfast with your grandma or grandpa? On the way to school, I'm on the lookout. I see a bus full of tourists and count ten bright yellow taxis. I spy a man sweeping a stoop and Grandma and I laugh when we see a tiny dog wearing a fluffy purple sweater. Do you see the ten taxis? Do you see the dog with its tiny purple sweater? At school, Grandma hands me my lunch and hugs me close before she says goodbye. That's what love looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. On the swings, I pump so hard, I see over the wall and into the alley. My friends shout, higher, higher, as my feet fly way up into the sky. That is what joy looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. Have you ever swung really high on the swings? It's a pretty fun thing to do, a joyful thing to do. Outside, car horns blast and sirens scream, but my classroom is quiet and calm. That's what peace looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. Do you find peace in your classroom sometimes? Peace in reading? I try to tie my shoes, but the laces tangle around my fingers. My teacher sits down beside me and shows me how to tie them. That's what patience looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. Have you ever had someone sit and help you? That's a nice thing to do. On the way home, I see a doorman wearing a red cape and a hat with a shiny brim. He's holding the door for a man using a wheelchair. The man moves very slowly, and the doorman chats with him and smiles. That's what kindness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. We talk a lot about acts of kindness. I like this act, holding the door open for someone. While I'm setting the table for dinner, there's a knock at the door. It's our neighbor from downstairs bringing us a loaf of bread. It's golden brown and warm and wrapped in a thin white towel. That's what goodness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. Have you ever had a loaf of warm bread right out of the oven? It's delicious. After dinner, I work on my homework while Grandma stands at the kitchen sink, washing dishes and humming to herself just like she does every single night. That's what faithfulness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. At bedtime, Grandma sits at the edge of my bed, singing me a lullaby and stroking my head. She tucks my blankets up close around me. That's what gentleness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. I lie in bed, watching the curtains flutter. I want to talk about the dog we saw today and how high I can swing, but Grandma says that once I'm tucked in, I have to stay in bed until morning. I close my eyes and I try to fall asleep. 
That's what self-control looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. I saw God over and over again today. Whenever I saw love, joy, and peace, and wherever there was patience, kindness, and goodness, when I saw faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, I saw God's Spirit at work. He's remembering everything that happened in the day. I don't see God the way I see my friends, or the street lights, or the river, but I see signs of God's Spirit all around me, right here in the city. I know what God is like. Maybe I can be like that too. In this book, I don't know if you know this, but this book is based off of a scripture passage from Galatians. And we're actually going to be talking about this verse later in our semester in Sunday school. But it's called The Fruits of the Spirit. Now, I know you might be imagining a banana or some grapes or maybe a little clementine or, ooh, a kiwi or strawberries. Oh, I'm getting hungry right now. But that's not the fruits of the Spirit that we're talking about. When we talk about the fruits of the Spirit, it's the ones that the little boy experienced throughout the day and how he saw God at work. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And that comes from Galatians chapter 5. I like this book because it gives us a way to imagine what God is like. So I wonder if you were thinking before what you imagine God to be like, did you see any of that in the book? Did you imagine God as high up in the sky, just like the little boy was dreaming when he was, or not dreaming, when he was feeling joy swinging so high? Did you imagine God as like a big warm hug from someone we love? Do you imagine that God is like an act of kindness, the doorman opening the door for that person in the wheelchair? I like that image of God being the neighbor showing up on my doorstep with a loaf of warm, tasty bread. That's a great image for me to think of when I imagine what God is like. Something I think we forget to do is spend time imagining. Imagining how God is at work in ways that we never even thought of. And I think it's our job as, as people who go to church, as people who love God and love Jesus, to trust that the Holy Spirit is kind of like moving among us and giving us a creative imagination to see how God is at work. You know, Pastor Katie talks a lot about how we see God at work in our day-to-day -day living because that's a really important thing to do. It's important to have like our binoculars ready to be on the lookout for how we see God at work. Because the more we open our eyes to see God at work, the more our hearts are open to understand how God is at work in our lives and how we see God's love being shared with our neighbors and with ourselves. And then it's our job to, to tell people what we see, right? I love that that little boy really wanted to get out of bed, right? And go tell his grandma and laugh about all the fun things that had happened. But he had self-control, which means he, he listened to what he needed to be doing. He was in control of his body. And he stayed in bed and he closed his eyes and he thought about how he saw God at work. I think it's a lovely way to go to bed, to think through how we have seen God at work. I wonder how you might see God, or what you might think God is like. And I hope that you'll maybe sit at the dinner table or breakfast table and share a bit with your family about what you think God is like. And maybe they'll share something about what they imagine God to be like. And you can say, 
Maybe God is like that too. I look forward to hearing how you imagine God is like. So let's pray today. You ready? We say, Dear God, we love you. We thank you that you are present in every part of our day. Help us to open our eyes to see you at work. And all God's children say, Amen. All right, friends, I hope you have a great day, a great week, and know that your church loves you, your family loves you, and your God loves you so much. Take care, and we'll see you next time.